Good morning and welcome to the Magic Software webinar, Top UI Tips for Building Mobile Business Screens. I'm Tom Hutchins and I'm joined today by my colleague Joe De Silva. Now I hope you can see my PowerPoint presentation. If you cannot, let me just... Sort of, there's two settings in this software and I always pick the wrong one. Let's see, is that better? That looks like that should now be working. Okay, great. So, so a quick uh, session. I'm going to give you a, a very short introduction to the topic. Um, then Joe is going to give you his top UI tips, and we'll have a Q&A session at the end. So, UI, user interface, is the top level, if you like, of the user experience. So the, the user interface is the screen, but there's a bunch of other things that our users want. Just so the ease of use, the flow between different screens, the functionality that's provided, including uh, offline and disconnected access, integration between uh, back-end systems and the actual application screen, and also the speed of using it and how it deals with peaks in traffic demand. This isn't to say that UI isn't important. Essentially, an application is a process which is wrapped in an interface which is optimized to work on your device. And that's particularly important with mobile because there are so many different devices out there. And we need to understand how the screens need to change depending on the screen size, the hardware orientation, so whether you're holding it in landscape and portrait mode, or some of the um, wearable devices we're starting to see now, in fact, whether it even has a screen. Uh, input methods, whether you're looking at touch or voice or stylus, and also what connectivity you have. So, for example, recently with the new iPhones, suddenly iOS apps might need to be able to connect over um, the, what they call it, the, um, the touch, <laughs> I've forgotten the name of it. <laughs> Um, the 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 pay by touch uh, system. I've oh, completely gone completely gone blank. NFC. You, NFC, that's the one. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> so we also have the challenge that there are several different things which we could mean when we say mobile apps, and these all work in different ways. But again, the interface is important because they are all providing the user with the information that they need, and minimizing the input. So giving them access to a process and the flow, making it simple for them to follow through that. And so, without further ado, let me hand over to Joe, who's going to show you some top tips for doing that. Now, let me just make Joe the presenter. Okay, Joe, go ahead, please. Hello, uh, everyone. Tom is still in the morning, but it's mid-afternoon, so good afternoon. Uh, I, ha I have only 15 minutes, so I'm, joined, I'm going to crack on. But uh, just to call your attention that the challenges we're trying to solve here is to provide access to critters on the user experience and support all those multiple mobile devices that uh, are in, in common demand at the moment. Um, my uh, point here today is mainly to call attention for some design uh, choices and give you some examples of how to create a business, screen, business screens, particularly for phones because when it comes to tablets, we have a different uh, list of choices there. Uh, I think the first main point is to remember that an app is quite different from an application, and here you can see a few points that are uh, where they differ significantly. Whereas an app is more focused, particularly on the phone, the user is on the move, short and simple, it must be very task-oriented, uh, quite different from an app, uh, application running on a desktop. 
and you most certainly will need a designer involved so don't just try to consider the points I'm going to highlight but also get your designers involved to improve that experience and improve the things that uh, you're showing and how they work and hang together to deliver that task. Uh, the first point would be the screen um, and the UI location. There are certain points on the screen, on the phone, that are harder or easier to access because most people tend to use their thumb to navigate and here is an example for a right-handed person normally accessing you can just invert or imagine that uh, in terms of the left-hand person using the phone but that is important because you need to locate or when you place a button on the screen that needs to be located where the user has more access and it's easier to react and respond to that action that you would expect so try to follow a more natural movement of the thumb and from left or right depending uh, what kind of support that you want to provide or need to provide and remember that the device may be used for one hand or mainly will be used in, by one hand and by one thumb moving about but there are some situations where both thumbs might be involved I'll give you an example particularly where you're expecting a few uh, or a bit more entry like text or email that's also interesting and talking of text in some cases there's also the support for voice uh, even though it's not recommended to uh, require the user to input quite a lot of things but when you do require try to consider the natural movement and for gestures uh, and this is the, an example of how those gestures should work which way would be easier to uh, move or swipe uh, and do some gestures. If you uh, are aware of the new iPhone 6 Plus, there's an interesting design choice there, exactly considering this uh, thumb accessibility, which uh, in this case, if you double tap on the home button, the screen comes down, so you have, uh, you put the options for the user to react and use their thumb uh, in a way that's more accessible. So just to highlight this point. Uh, the buttons also need to be uh, considered the, um, the size of the buttons because even though the phone has a quite um, small screen, there needs to be a minimum height or um, size of that button to be touchable so the user won't be touching the wrong button and things uh, particularly for people with a much larger thumb so try not to or try to consider that in terms of the size of the buttons that you put on the screen and here you can see a few examples that is well located easier to touch there's a clear indication of the touch there's um, also a minimum size and there's also a space around the button so the user won't be uh, inclined or by mistake touching the wrong button and also there's a contrast there's colors that clearly identify the buttons and where's possible there's on not only the image but also a text identifying the function and sometimes in in your application you can position the buttons by importance as well or even usability we have a framework that's now uh, highlighting this and providing you a quick uh, kickstart uh, making use of that the other uh, point is to keep it simple and consistent uh, avoiding a cognitive burden avoid making the user have to think uh, too much, remember they're on the move, and also avoid some inconsistent presentation where the screens tend to um, change quite a lot and sometimes presenting in one way and another time in another way. As an example, a counter example I'll show you, there's a mix of text or image. If you use either text or image, try to be consistent and use one so the user is always expecting 
that same way. The colors and the navigation also need to be interesting, attractive, so make the user more interested in going back and using your application. And in some cases you can use that to identify your app, your brand, and make the users um, really comfortable using your application. To navigate, uh, there is an expectation of back buttons. This normally is embedded on Android, but um, for Apple also there's a um, navigation bar that clearly you need to allow the users to come back. And here's an example of an inconsistency where there's all the either text, either images, but it's not really a good presentable and the button seems to be squished in the, the row. So just to give you an example. My next point is show, try to show what's more important first. In this example, you, if you are presenting stories that will be changing frequently. So the, either the importance by the user, by the usability, or by the news in this case, will uh, affect what is showing and uh, what order is that being shown. So that's uh, the idea is to minimize the need to navigate, so allow the user the most immediate action to be more, uh, more available. And that's defined by the importance. Uh, one other point is to give the user a clear direction if they want to move uh, or one page or multiple page left or right. Where do, should they go from here? So here's uh, an example, but also a much better example on the second image uh, showing an easy navigation by, via thumb and also with some clear indication where and what is implied by touching that option. The uh, other option that still resemble, resemble uh, a bit of um, desktop but also has the, its usage on the mobile, and here's an example with Google Mail that you're probably very familiar with, that you have a menu and that menu is normally hidden by touching a button or swiping to the right on iOS. Normally that menu is shown and then it become useful, so make use of them, make use of that navigation is more or less expected and it's interesting and useful. And allows you to show things without occupying too much of the screen, uh, the user can open up the menus when needed. Um, you can sometimes try to fit too much on a screen and that uh, causes a problem because you have multiple processes, multiple views, but the screen is quite small. So here you have an, here you have an image of an example where that uh, was trying to squeeze too much. And now you, you can see another example where the most important uh, information came graphically and is shown on the top uh, high level, but also allows a drill down. So on the example on the right, you have immediate information but you still can touch one of them and then open up uh, for more details. So this is a brilliant example of uh, present immediately, but also allows it to drill down. Don't try to squeeze all those uh, screens into one and make it confusing. Also make the user uh, waiting too much. And whenever you're doing whatever they are doing, you should give immediate feedback so here's an example of a few buttons that just you use colors to highlight that uh, as soon as the button is pressed, it, there is some reaction. And for that, sometimes you have to remove any non-critical data transfer to the background, but not locking the screen and keeping the screen reacting and with the minimum information that's needed. Uh, in any case, if you do uh, provide things that do take longer, provide some feedback or provide a frequent indication of progress and manage that with a clear indication. The 
the minimum input needs to be balanced depending on your application. It's mo most of them you will be able to, with your designer, to minimize the um, use. But sometimes, like an email application, you do uh, need to provide some uh, means to type. Uh, and that can be used voice now a lot. Um, a lot of people are using voice. Apparently, the millennials use voice more than us um, older people, let's say. But uh, in this case, there is a clear example that using the phone in landscape allows now the input and the typing with uh, both thumbs. So that's also an interesting solution. And coming to an end, uh, let's uh, not forget the user testing. So it's very important that you put your application out there, let people test, let people use it, and try to gather information. And that's important that your platform offers some analyticals and also gather information of usage so you can analyze that and uh, adapt your application and even focus to a particular group of users and to their expectations. And also, there are a multitude of devices. It's important that you test on each device that you plan to support. So uh, the look and feel, the navigation, uh, whatever physical elements that the um, device must uh, might have are tested. And you can give the users a very good uh, usage platform and a good mobile application. If you want to try, I invite you to download our platform or get a free session with us and use also our um, framework that allows you to very quickly build applications with common elements like menus, navigation, uh, auditing, analytics, etc. Thank you very much. Um, I'll pass back to Tom. If you have any questions, do use the question uh, chat and we try to respond to them now. Thank you.